Well, welcome today um, to our Ed Talk, uh, our Ed Tech Talk. Um, today, I am Tracy Thies with San Luis County Office of Education and the Ed Tech Coordinator, and I'll let you introduce yourself. I'm Jennifer O'Hagan, and I'm the Ed Tech Teacher on Special Assignment for San Luis Coastal Unified School District. So, we're going to cover today for you guys um, Google Sites. We're going to start out. I'll show you some samples, and then Jennifer's going to go ahead and set you up on getting your page started. And then we'll show you how to add documents and images and some little tricks to it. And we'll be working more hands-on on this one with you directly and kind of going around. So um, we'll just start out with the preview right now and to get you going. I wanted to share what some of the samples would look like on um, a website. So essentially through um, Google Sites, it's a free web builder for you and it allows you to, you could have it set up for a classroom, you could have it for a project, you could have it for an information page about yourself or whatever your goal is with the web page. So here's a couple examples. Um, with our curriculum ed council for the um, whole county, they go to this now to get all of their agenda items and meetings and Im information based on each of the meetings that they uh, meet throughout the year. And then once they go into that tab, it's set up so that they can um, see what some of the flyers are that they're going to be having information and it directly links down to a folder in uh, a Google Drive and it allows them to then download and access any of that information um, and it's really nice so that they don't have to get an email with um, all those attachments and at our first meeting in the beginning of the year we had probably like 20 attachments to the email and it was just getting crazy and more and more emails going out oh one more attachment another flyer here's this and that and so this is just a nice concise easy way it's great for staff meetings and other types of things so this is an example um, another one I just have uh, done is um, an iPad training and so we had kind of set up uh, iPads and had some information where you can go get some information and had um, our um, Appy Hour, iPad resources, some portal resources, some uh, different activities and it kind of uh, was our driving factor of the day. We just used this to guide our training for the day. And then it was available for teachers to use as a reference afterwards for all the information they would need. Um, another site that I had is just a new one. I haven't played around with it much, but just Tech Time with Tracy and I was starting to have different um, applications, blogs, videos, extensions um, for Chrome and apps for Chrome and resources for teachers to go to and then it would be like um, almost running like a blog for me or a resource page for people out in the community who are teaching and wanting tech resources. So those are some samples and it's really a nice easy tool so we'll get you started on how to get set up. So here we go. And just to piggyback on what Tracy was saying, I'm, I've been teaching teachers how to use Google Sites and also students. And so students are building Google Sites as um, an electronic portfolio. So if you were to look at, I think it was one of her web pages, um, the iPad one. Was that on here? Tracy? Yeah. Um, improve oh, right here. Um, so this was a good, a good example. For students, they might have a welcome page and then um, reading, math, social science um, writing and then put some samples of their best work on their um, Google site as a di digital portfolio. So I've been kind of working with kids on that as well. So what I want to do now is take you guys through the steps of actually building a site that looks similar to this with a couple of tabs and then Tracy will come back to you and show you how to um, in insert things. Um, I also have some Google Docs that I can share with you that show you the steps that we're, what we're going to be going through today. So you don't need to be taking notes. Okay. So if you're, I looked around and I saw that all of you guys were logged into your Google account. So I'm going to have you guys go back and I'm going to try to take us right from the beginning here. If you're just on your home screen, so we just start by getting going to your apps 
and um, finding Google Sites, and there's lots of ways to do that. You can go to Chrome and just type in sites.google.com. I like to use this little waffle up here and go to my sites. So you need to have a Google account or a Gmail account to start. And then you should have a create button. So does everyone in the room have a create button right here in front of them? Okay. And so these are the different sites. As you can see, Tracy has several sites. You have a lot of, you've got, we've got lots of storage so you can build many sites. So you're just going to hit the create button. And a lot of people want to browse the gallery for more, but when you're building one of these sites, I suggest going this route, a blank template, because browsing the gallery can, um, can be limiting in a way because they're kind of pre-built sites that you can't customize as well. So I like to start with a blank template. And now you're going to name your site. So if it's going to be, um, you know, resource site for Cayucas Elementary or something, you can just name it that way. We can always change it later. So go ahead and name your site. So I'm going to call this um, EdTech SLCUSD. Okay. And again, we can change all this. And I have all of these steps that we're going through available to you um, in a Google Doc that I'll share at the end. Okay. So name your site, and then it, it's going to just, you can leave all the site location as it is. This is your, um, your address, your URL. Now you're going to select a theme. And so let me scroll up here so the camera can get that. And we can always change all of this. So these are the different themes that people um, select. And I always choose one knowing that I may have to come back and change it later because of the colors don't, don't work necessarily with what I'm, what I, um, what I'm, the, with the content that I'm, I'm using. So a lot of kids, you know, choose these sparkly ones. The girls all like the glitter. But um, I'm just going to choose... Uh, how about seafoam? And then you're going to hit create. Okay. And it takes a second. It's building the site. And now you have a, a website. <laughs> and these are, this is what it looks like to everybody minus the stuff here at the top. Okay. So these are your editing buttons. And it comes with a home page. Um, because Tracy's account is part of um, the County Office of Education, she has this logo. My websites have SLCUSD on them, and that can always also be removed. Um, and you can just have it blank with the title, and that, that should be the name of your site. Okay, and so this is your home page. And what we're going to do, you know, you saw some tabs across the top of the other sites and some things across um, this left sidebar. So I'm going to have us just kind of start constructing the site right now, and then we'll go back in and do some editing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some more pages. We're going to add two more pages. And I want you to be thinking about what to call those pages. So one page might be, if you're going to be um, doing this for parents or something, maybe a calendar page where you're going to post your events. So let's go ahead and create a new page. And that's this plus sign right here. Okay. And we're going to call it, um, I might call this one events because this is an ed tech website. And so name your page, and again, everything can always be changed. We're gonna leave it as a web page, as a template. And then we're gonna keep it at the top level, meaning it's not gonna be a sub page or a subcategory of home. So just leave it um, at the top level and then hit create. And you will see when you've created it, now your page comes up over here on the left, okay? Now, Google, every time you create a new page, it defaults to allowing people to add files and comments. And I, I usually like to turn this off because it kind of, I don't want people necessarily being able to comment on all my pages. So I'm going to show you how to turn that off and on, and then you can decide whether or not you want to do that. I typically have it turned off. So first of all, we need to save our page that we've created. Okay, And now we're back to that same editing um, toolbar at the top. And now you're going to go into this, this gear. And this gives you all kinds of different options. And this is, and you're going to go to page settings. And this is the only time you would use this um, setting. So hit page settings. And you're going to uncheck these bottom three. I just like to keep the top one that says show page title. 
I don't need a page description or anything else like this, and I'm going to hit save, and then watch what happens. This goes away. So it's a little bit cleaner. Okay. So now you've got, now if I click over here on the left, I can click onto my home page, and home pops up, and my events page. Okay. And now I'm going to add, we're going to add one more page while we're at, at it. So let's create one more page. And this one might be, um, I might call this one for staff. Okay, again, I'm going to leave it as a web page. I'm going to leave it at the top level. It doesn't need to be a sub page under events or anything like that. And I'm going to hit create. And when I create it, whoops, it, it start it, it defaults to letting me edit it right away. I'm going to hit save. And now I'm here at this page where I can remove these things on the bottom, these comments. So I'm going to go into that gear icon. Okay, and I'm going to take, go to page settings. And I'm going to uncheck these three. And I'm going to leave everything else alone and hit save. Okay. Now you'll see over here at the left, people ask, well, how do I rearrange the order of this? Because what it's doing is it's going to go in alphabetical order based on what you have named your pages. But what I like to do for a website is, whoops, I don't know what happened, how I got there. What on earth? You hit um, sitemap. I did hit sitemap, didn't I? Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. I like to have those tabs across the top, um, but if you don't like the tabs across the top, you can just leave them here on this side. Um, but I'm going to show you how to make these pages or, and the, turn into tabs across the top, and that way it leaves more space on the side for other items. Okay? And then when we get back, once, I, once we've put those tabs across the top, Tracy's going to go into showing you how to use this editing button where you can actually start adding things. Okay? All right. So let's, let's now continue building this site and add the, move these tabs over here. And this is where it gets a little tricky. So let, we're going to use this gear icon again. And now we're going to edit the site layout, okay, because we're going to change the way the site layout looks. So I know I'm in edit site layout mode because it says it right up here, edit site layout, okay. And what we want to do is we want to edit the horizontal navigation. So you've got all these different choices here. So when I click on horizontal navigation, I can toggle. So when I click on it, watch what happens. A home button pops up. Okay? If I click on it again, the home button will disappear. So go ahead and click on the horizontal navigation until you see the home button pop up. Okay? And now what we need to do is we need to add these things to the sidebar. So the way, now we have our, our horizontal navigation turned on. So you, as you see, when I hover over it next to home, I get this edit horizontal navigation. And that's what I want to do. So you're just going to click on it one time until you get a box that pops up that says configure navigation. Can okay. you repeat that part? Are we there? Okay. Uh, I'll go back. Let me take you back and repeat it. Okay. Yeah, and just stop me if I'm going fast. I can't tell from your faces whether we're together or not. So I'm in edit site layout mode. Can you get to it from the gear? Here, I'm going to hit close. So I'm back in the gear. You're setting gear. Mm -hmm. Edit site layout. Almost to the bottom of that page. And I have all this, again, written down for you guys, all these steps. Okay? And then I'm going to turn on the horizontal navigation. And I know it's turned on because... Now it's turned off. It's turned on because I clicked on it, and there's my home button. Okay. Now I want to get to that. I want to actually put stuff on there. So I have to hover over it again and push the button, push my mouse, poof, and configure navigation. Yeah. <laughs> few, quite a few little steps here to, to get here. But um, now what, we're, what we want to do is we're going to add a page, and what we're going to be doing is adding your pages here across the top on your horizontal uh, navigation bar. So you're going to click Add Page. And now it's looking at your, at your horizontal navigation bar. You do not need to add the Home button because it's already there. So let's add, I'm going to add my four staff. And you have to do them one at a time. 
after you select it, you have to hit the OK, and uh -huh. select again. And then you hit Add Page, and I'm going to hit Events, and I'm going to hit OK. All right. And what if I, if I hit Add Page, and what if I accidentally hit, a lot of students do this, so they say, oh, I accidentally did Home. I have two homes up here. Um, you just look what happens when I click on these. It turns blue, and I can edit them. So I can remove this Home button by just selecting it and throwing it in the trash. And here's where you can change the order of things. We only have two pages right now, but like if, I, if I want events to be first, I can click like, I can just use these arrows, these up and down arrows. If I wanted this um, staff to be a subcategory, I can click it that way. And it would, be, it would fall under the events tab, but I'm gonna keep them all the same right now. So that's kind of how we move things around. Okay, and then the style, if you like boxes or tabs or links, and you can always change it that way. I usually like tabs. Links are really hard, I think, for visitors to see. So I would select boxes or tabs, and you can always check and see what it looks like and then come back. So are you guys ready to hit OK? Yeah. All right. So when you hit OK, do we all have our tabs at the top now? Almost, yeah. Okay. Yay! See, it just takes a second. Yes, it takes a second for it to go, and then it's there. But now we have them in two places. Okay. And so we're still in edit site layout mode. We can still change, change the site layout a little bit. So now we want to take this off because we don't need these buttons in two places. So if you come to the sidebar, and this is where it gets tricky again, you're going to hover over it until you see that navigation. Okay, and all you can do, you can just hit the X button and X out of it. And it'll say, are you sure you want to delete it? And we can always add it back. But just hit OK, and it goes away. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, how much time do we Okay. Yeah, I can show them a couple more things, and then I'm going to let you have the... Have the okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you some things that you can now put in this sidebar. Now we have some, some real estate over here that we can add, add to. So the, we're going to edit this sidebar. We're going to add something to I think it's this edit button. I can't remember which... Nope, sorry. Push button. Yeah, you push everything until you can find what you want. So we're going to hit the, hit the plus button. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. Um, and here's some choices that you have to add to your sidebar. So you've got a navigation, and feel free to just try different things. Um, I like to scroll down, um, and I show kids this countdown timer, which is fun. Um, add. Okay, and so I, I guess it hit add before I realized what it did. So hit add for the countdown timer. Here, I'll show you guys that again. Let me remove it and show you how I did that. So I'm going to hit the plus, scroll down, and these are my choices. I'm going to hit add countdown timer. And we can now just, to, to edit this, you just hover over it and click on it one time and let you configure it. So you can put the name of the event. So if the event is going to be the Google Summit, what's the date, Tracy? Um, of March, uh, Okay, so I, I, when I click into my calendar, I can find it rather easily, March 7th, and hit OK. And then watch what happens. It takes a second, and it tells you 39 days until the Google Summit. So students are using this to put the last day of school or, you know, until summer camp, and then the next millennium. I had kids figuring out the next millennium, and the number goes off the charts. So, you can do it till the project is due. Yes, uh huh. There's all kinds of things. Uh huh. Sixth grade camp. Yeah. So it's kind of fun, um, and you can actually put multiple countdowns if you'd like on here. So that's a kind of a nice little feature. So let's go now back to our site. We're still in edit site layout mode. So we're going to hit close. Okay, and now what I want to do with you guys is one more step because when, when you leave and try to continue this on your own, I don't want you to get lost. And so if you wanted to add another page, we're gonna go ahead and do that right now, and I wanna show you what happens when we create a third page. 
Okay. And give me a name for our third page, Tracy. What could I call um, this one? Resources. Okay. Resource. Oops. Now I got it. Now resources. Okay, so it's going to leave the same things as I showed you before. Put page at the top level. Just leave it all alone, and hit create. Okay, and then hit save. Okay, and I'm going to remove my comments by clicking on that gear icon and going to page settings. And I'm going to uncheck these bottom three. Okay. Okay. But now, where's my resource page? I don't see it. It's no. It's not here, and it's not up there. Okay. So we. What. What happened is it's been created, and I can edit it and do all kinds of things with it. But no one can see it yet. I have to make it visible. And because we removed that sidebar item, it's no longer visible. So we need to put it up here on the tab. So let me show you that. How many of you have added your third page so far? We're almost there. Okay. It's okay. Okay. Gadget, gadget guy over there. Okay. And again, we can always change the names of these, uh, of these pages and move the, the orders around. So once you've created your third page, now you need to put it up here. Now you have to tell, you have to make it visible. So we're going to go back to that edit site layout mode by clicking on the gear. And we're going to go down to edit site layout. Okay. And now we have to edit this horizontal navigation bar again. So all you have to do is hover over it next to the last tab that you have. And it's saying edit horizontal navigation. And I'm going to click on it. And this same box pops up. And I want to add a page, the new page that I made. So now my resource page just shows up here. And I'm going to hit OK. And now it's here. And maybe I want resources to be up um, right next to my home page. That's OK. I'll take you back through it again. OK? And there it is. So what we did, let me take you through that again. We created our page. We went back into Edit Site Layout. We clicked on the horizontal navigation bar one time to bring in this box up. And we added our page. When we click Add Page, it pops up here. Okay, And like I said before, if I accidentally add a page twice, I can just highlight on it and hit the trash can to take it away and hit OK. Okay. And then these are some other options in Edit Site Layout where you can edit your header right here if you click on header. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm toggling on it. If I, I can turn it off or on, enable or disable the header. So if I turn it on again, I should be able to edit it. And if I click directly over on this, I can remove the lo logo, the domain default logo. So I can check or uncheck that. So if I don't want a logo, I can put no logo and watch what happens. It takes it away. So all I did was I clicked directly on the header. I'm still in that edit site layout mode. and I can put my logo back. If you want a custom logo, it's real specific. You can't not adjust the size in here. You have to have the size of your custom logo ready to go before you upload it here. And I have that in my documentation for you that I'll share the actual size that they recommend. So I think it looks better without the domain default logo, but it's totally up to you. And then you hit close. Okay. How do you publish it? Oh, good. Good to know. So what, what right now, um, it's private only to me. And that means that only, or only to Tracy, because this is her account. So right here in the share button, 
This is for other people to help edit it. Okay, and this is a link to share that where people would be actually be able to um, edit and help you work on the site. But the actual URL is the one at the very top of your of your um, screen there. So if I go back, I don't have it. I don't have it on this. I can't. I'm not used to this Chromebook. So it should be here at the top of your screen. And unfortunately, I can't see it on mine here. But I'll have Tracy um, pop that up since this is her Chromebook. I'm not really sure where. What is it that you're looking the for? address bar so sh they can see the address of how to share it. Yours is filled with oh. Yeah, this is my stuff. <laughs> yeah. The address bar or the URL? Right? Yeah. It's just not showing on the screen side right now. Is that what you mean? I don't see it anywhere to grab it to show them. What are you trying to Just like the, the URL of the should be at the top here. Oh, it's because we're in this presentation mode. Oh, it's, we're in presentation mode. Okay. All right. Well, I think it's the it's the address at the top of your screen. That's that is it, your it, it's usually URL. it's sites.google.com slash a and then whatever you've named your site page. Is that like Yeah, so you can go back to your sites like this. That, I'm gonna that's go, what ours would be. Mm -hmm. Yours would be a different convention. So what you can do then is if you're not sure what it is, what, what do we call this? Oh my goodness, we have so many sites right on here. EdTech. Okay. So if I click on this, there's the name right underneath. Yeah, there's the name right underneath it as well. Okay. It's just because we're in presentation mode, I can't show that to you right now. Oh, if you go back, it was on the screen. So hers is okay. Oh, right there. It, it always is sites.google and then slash a and then whatever your GAF account is. So um, in your case, Sloco. Your case, Cayucas, um, and then okay. dot org. Slash and then the name of the page you just created. The it's a page. long site, yeah. So the way, if you wanted to share it with people, you would copy that hyperlink and send it in an email. If you wanted to, and do it, it has that a way. share option on the web page mm -hmm. too, right there. But that's to just, um, and it so will. That's just to call. That's just to. Um, the last word goes. It'll give to, you the. Link. Okay. I mean, you could actually right there. direct okay. them right to your tab as well because it has mm -hmm. a resource. It has all my mm -hmm. links, yeah. so you can direct. Them yes, to you just click on that tab yeah. and then copy the link in the, the tab. Mm -hmm. And the last word is mm -hmm. the tabs. Yeah. Okay. It and it does do this one thing when it names a site. So how she did Ed Tech, and then I think you had a space. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, Ed Tech space and then S L C U S D. It will add a dash in there. So if you yeah. choose to not want that when you're first initially naming it. You can remove that dash if you want it all like as a mm -hmm. word combined or not. So it's up to mm -hmm. the beginning step. But yeah, Tracy had a good point. If you go to that share button, um, you can just grab this, the URL right here as well. But this is sharing it with other people to help collaborate and work on the, and add to the document. So um, versus, versus just it. viewing it, yeah. Right. Okay. So you could even have students on a web page mm -hmm. and then they all are collaborating together mm -hmm. or you could have access for students to look at a web page it depends on how you're using it yeah so I'm going to have Tracy now show you how to use this um, edit the page button and you're going to get to edit and maybe add some content to your pages now are you good with that mm -hmm. okay okay so um, I am on my home page and possibly want to put a logo or something that you know a picture or something so if um, you click on your home page and go ahead to the pencil, and that is your edit page, the three you know buttons that you always are going back to, you're always either going to your settings and doing like layout design or page settings within the wheel, the little setting wheel, creating a new page with the little plus sign or the pencil mode, editing the existing page you're on, okay? So editing in that page. And um, I am going to just go ahead and up to the top here under insert. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image. And you can grab even a picture off of the desktop, the basic photos if you want there, if you want. Um, I'm going to grab an image. And it will either let you do it um, by adding a web address to a URL of an image. Or in this case, I can upload it. And I'm going to grab something that I have off of my page here already. Let's see if I can. 
find, I'm not quite sure what my image is gonna be, let's see. Those aren't very exciting, so let me see if I can find an image that's better. That's the browser. So wherever you locate one, you can, in this oh. case, grab one from your um, actual desktop from the photos that they have there, or go to a uh, um, web page and grab one as well. So let me see if I can find the logo for Ed Tech Talks. All right, so I am grabbing my logo for this, and I'm going to hit open. And it's loading it up with the wheel right now, and it gives you the actual picture, and it will always highlight it in like a yellow background so you know which one you're grabbing. And then I hit OK. And you'll see that in this case, I got a giant picture, and it's not really going to fit. So right here, you have these options. You know, keeping it less, left justified, center or right, small, medium or large on the size, or 100% or original size. Um, and then where you have the text wrap around the picture or under and above it, okay? And then you also have the option to change. This is taking you directly to the link of the logo itself, but if you wanted the picture to link to a web page, I can also do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it small so it's not taking up my whole page. And I am actually going to change this right now um, to a link that would allow them to go to our calendar. So you could, um, or I'll, I'll change it in a minute. Let's, let me do that on the next one so that you can go to a, like a basic website. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it as the image and I have to go back up and hit save. Were you guys able to add a picture at all to yours? Or find one off the desktop? Was it hard? You want, Jen, you wanna show her on that one to see if you can get them? Okay. So let's try that on, I'm gonna to go to another tab. And go ahead to your pencil mode again. And I am in my mode to add a picture or something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have another little tab. I'm just going to open another browser tab and just go Google image. So I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to images. And in this case, I'm just going to say Google sites and see if I can find a logo just so you can see if I went to a web page. Okay. Maybe I am going to use the Google Sites logo to refer to this. So I can um, click on it and I can actually, once I'm viewing this image, you have the option to copy that image or save it. So in this case, I'm going to save my image just so I have it in my drive somewhere. So that you're, if you were creating a new um, Google site and you didn't have anywhere to put this image, you could go into your drive. I'm putting it in, uh, I'm actually going to create a folder right now so that I can find it. I'm going to call it Google Sites. Sometimes I end up putting things into a folder just so I have that access point afterwards for my images. So then I have that folder there, Google Sites, and the file name down here says like a thumbnail basically, so I'm going to say Google Sites, and I saved that image right there. It actually downloaded it for me. So if I went back to my resource page here and I want to grab that one I just put into a file. I hit insert image and I'm going to search by my upload image again. And so to make it easy for myself, I tried to put it in a Google site folder. Let's see if I, I think I actually layered my folder within EdTech Talks by accident. Michael, did you see where I ended up putting that? Um, it was in the flyers. Just search for it. It was in the flyers. So 
Yeah, so. Yeah, I'll just use my search button, Google site. As I started to type it in, there it comes up, the JPEG I just saved. So my little quick save of the folder, I ended up hiding my folder somewhere, but I can find it afterwards. <laughs> yeah. So I grab that image, and I hit OK, and I'm going to make it small. And this time I'm going to make it in the middle. And you have the option of wrapping on or off for the text, but I'm going to change the um, website right here. I might maybe make it medium because it's a little smaller than I thought. And I'm going to change it by hitting that change button and right here instead of it going to that JPEG I actually highlight and just remove that info and I'm going to just do www.google.com and in this option you have do you want it to open in a new window or on the same page I like to open in a new window so you don't lose the um, user so I click that button and I hit OK and I have to hit the save button again and you now should have this image and I should be able to click on it and it will take me to a new window of Google so if I click it is now popped up another tab which is now my search for Google if I go back to my page here I have the option of also adding things from my drive folder, which makes it a lot easier to take a whole folder and then just documents at one time. So under my resources, um, I'm still on that page, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the um, edit page again, the pencil. And you'll notice right now the way this is set up, it has like the first like resources and then this one space. You have different layout choices. So at the top here, under layout, you can choose any of these styles, one column, two, or three, and it will tell you how it's either stacking vertical or horizontal, depending on what you want to use. So sometimes the two column is nice and simple and easy to use. I usually try to keep to a simple format or a top, bottom, and a middle. So now you'll see I have two sides to work with. And on this side, I'm going to click over there so that my cursor is on this uh, right side. And I'm going to show you how to add the drive. So if you go ahead and hit Insert. And over to, you'll see all of these are options of what you can add. Table contents, hyperlinks, images, postings of, you know, text box. And then here, you'll see Drive. Okay. And under Drive, you can either put a single document or image or form or presentation or the whole folder. So I'm going to show you the whole folder. Select Folder. And hopefully you have a folder of some sort in your drive that you could grab. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab Flyers and hit Select. And right here, once I've grabbed the folder, you sometimes have to play with the height and width of what it will look like. So often I change it from 600 to, I'm going to go 400 by 400. And I hit save. And you have the option to include a border around the folder and include a title. And I usually leave those checked. And it's starting to put that into here but it's still not saved so it's not the final what it will view as and then I hit save and now you'll see this would be my all of my flyers and the size of it looks okay for me like I can make it, it looks like it's showing everything that's in that folder so I like the 400 by 400 but if I wanted to go in and modify that down or up on size, I can do so by going back to my edit and see where this is highlighting right now, this image. I have to click over here. And if I click over there, I can go in and actually change the size of that um, property. 
again by the little wheel. So if I did another modification. But for me, right now, it's okay on the size. And then hit save. I'm going to show you one other thing that you could put in that might be helpful too. It's when you go to do, um, uh, I'm going to click here and show you on my um, CEC page, when you actually were putting the little pictures. Um, here, I, I didn't use a table, and I just was putting the images in, and it, it didn't always size out exactly. On the December one, I ended up making this become a table up at the top here, or actually, you'll see these are all different sizes, so I have it in one group, but in January we made a table so that they all were equal on the size of the icons that would, the pictures that came up. So, let me see. See how they are all placed in there? But they're all like kind of equal size. By doing the table, it just makes it a lot easier to grab those images. So I'm going to show you on the, uh, I'm going to check my events page. And then I'm going to do my edit pencil one more time. And this time, so you can either go here and do your um, table contents or some other options, but I'm going to insert the table under the table top heading and it allows you to pick the size. So I might do a four by four, or sorry, a four by two. And you'll see that it starts out small, but depending on what you end up putting into that table, it will grow in size. So if I um, put a few images into there, just for instance, I have my cursor in that first square, okay? And then I'm gonna insert an image and I can upload a picture again. Let's see if I can put that same picture I had a minute ago. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm shrinking it down. And now you'll see that it starts to change, but we'll keep the equal size as I add more to it. And I think there is a little shortcut that you can add more than one image at a time that we've kind of swept in and grabbed some. So, but just to start with the basics, grabbing your image and going. So I'm going to hit save. And you still have all the basic uh, editing that you can change your colors and fonts and things as well if you want. Any questions on that or did I lose anyone? No? Do you want to share anything else on it right now or? We can help individually or... Are there any questions that we can answer that you don't think we covered yet or that you don't need to know before we set you free? This is the basics to get it set up and then you kind of go through a routine. What I found, and I'm sure you did too, after you start doing it, your brain kind of is like, okay, I get it. You have to do the same thing each time. Mm -hmm. First, creating the page. Mm -hmm. Once you've created the page, you can edit that page. Or if you want to do more overall site editing, you have to use the wheel. And that wheel, you have to go in either, as she mentioned, to the page setting and remove like your comments and subpages, okay? Or you're going into the page setting, um, sorry, the, the settings, edit site layout. And then that allows you to change your sidebar and your top bar. And one other thing, too, um, while we're in this mode here with this gear, I'm going to hit close. Um, what I didn't go to was manage site. And this is where if you decide, I don't like my theme or I want to change, there's all kinds of things. It defaults to general, but we have all of these different um, things we can, we can make adjustments to. You can change your site name here. And again, if you're not, not sure where I'm at, it says it right here. I'm in Manage Site. Okay. You can change. This is what I like when I go to Themes, Colors, and Fonts. When I click that, remember how we set the theme up when we first started? Well, now it looks a little bit different. If I click up here, I'm in my Theme um, Manager, whatever you want to call it. Now I've got these all here. If I want to see what Sunset looks like, it gives me a preview right here. 
oh, I like that better, or maybe I don't like the orange, so I might try something else. Um, so you can, you can change your themes right here, and then you can go even further and start really customizing the colors within that theme. And so what happens is a lot of people start jumping into all this stuff, and then they, they get lost. And so if you do, just go back and clear all customizations, and it'll take you back to the original theme. That's so, good to know, because you can get mm -hmm. a little yeah. engrossed into it and then realize, oh, gosh, this is not what doesn't look doing. right. And that's in changing the, the, the entire page or the header. So you've got all kinds of ways to customize. But I just kind of like this because it gives me a, like a preview of what the theme will look like. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Um, and then one other thing people ask, what if I want to get rid of my site? I just, or I made one and I start, oh, want to make a new one or I, I don't like the first one? one okay. Well, I, it's, if we just go into general, it's right here. Delete this site. So I'm still in manage site under general. I can delete this site and it will say, are you sure you want to delete? And then I still think it takes like 30 days before the name goes away and they yeah. give that name to somebody else. So that's how you would delete the site. And that's when I first set up the CEC meetings and then I had that little dash in there and not wanting the dash. So after 30 days, I could go back and make the adjustment to the one I wanted. So, uh, so be careful on the naming at the beginning if you want to put it out for students or teachers or uh, mm -hmm. parents. It makes it easier if you think of what it will be in the end because it does have that 30-day window if you want to change it. So again, to get to your site, if we go home and want to try it at home, go to your, you know, log into your Google account and find the um, apps launcher or the waffle that I like to call it and go to sites and it should take you here or log into your Google account and type in sites.google.com and it will take you here as well. And then you just click on the site like that and it takes you right into the edit mode where we were today. As you're the owner, it always allows you to edit. If you're not the owner, it won't let you go into that mode. But, mm -hmm. so. All right. All right, thank you so much for Thanks. being here. Yeah.